Total unduplicated reach and frequency, or TERF, is a great technique you can use as a marketer to essentially satisfy the greatest number of consumers with the least amount of effort. And I love explaining TERF because I get to talk about ice cream. It's kind of a rule in the industry, and, and honestly, it makes for a very handy analogy. Um, let's say you own an ice cream cart, and you have room in the cart for two flavors, but you can make three flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and pistachio. Conventional wisdom might say, put the most popular flavors in your cart. But what if it turns out that people who buy chocolate would also buy vanilla and vice versa? And even though those are the two most popular flavors, you could probably satisfy one customer with either flavor. What if it were also true that pistachio lovers tend to want pistachio and nothing else? If it's not in the cart, they won't buy anything. Turf is made to uncover niche markets like this and to help you get the most out of what are always limited marketing and product development resources. It's a great technique. It's one we've used in many industries. It's also a technique that's evolving and can be improved by incorporating the element of choice. Traditionally, turf has been done using scales, uh, how much you like a, a flavor, uh, your willingness to buy something. But scales have problems we know very well. Everything becomes important to the respondent and there's no differentiation in the data. The better the differentiation, the better our ability to identify the best bet line extensions and choice-based techniques really excel in terms of introducing differentiation into the data. Let me give you two examples. The first is for a healthcare client of ours who wanted to know which group of new plan features from among 14 would appeal to the broadest number of consumers. We used a technique called MaxDiff, which um, essentially presents consumers with different sets of features and asks them to choose most and least important features from within each set. And then we use Turf to identify the best feature combinations. And not surprisingly, the feature ranked number one uh, was also the one that reached the greatest number of consumers. But what was more insightful for our client was that we saw noteworthy increases in plan takers when we included features number four and number nine. So that was very useful information that we got out of Turf. A second example was for work we did uh, in the insurance market. A client of ours wanted to know which portfolio of plans to launch in the state of New York was the question. And we used a technique called discrete choice. Conjoint, which goes a step further, and rather than focusing on features, focuses on entire product portfolios. Participants chose preferred plans that were built from a range of common insurance plan attributes, deductibles, co-payments, out-of-pocket costs. What we then did was create 10 possible plans using a tool for simulating what-if scenarios. Uh, we evaluated preferences for each of these 10 likely product profiles, and what we found was, again, the power of turf. Uh, the most popular plan configuration was, of course, the one that reached the most people, but in combination with the third and seventh most popular plan options, that was really the optimal reach. Now, these two examples illustrate how choice-fueled turf analysis can help you identify niche opportunities and make better line optimization decisions. As with any analytic technique, it requires thoughtful design and decisions, which we'd be glad to discuss with you more if you'd like. But for now, I encourage you to read the white paper, uh, visit our site at trchome.com, and really make the most of this useful technique.